Hey everyone, welcome to That's a Good Card, a podcast where we talk about commanders, strategy, community, and of course, good cards. And an extra special welcome and thank you for checking out the very first podcast that Kyle and I are doing. Kyle, why don't you take a second to introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Kyle. This is our very first podcast. I'm really excited to be working with y'all on this. Something that we have started to love is CEDH, and that's what this podcast is about. We want to talk about good cards. We want to talk about commanders. We want to talk about strategy. We want to talk about community. All of these things that make the CEDH community and CEDH in general great. Yeah, and my name is Yaw. I started playing Magic a little bit ago and back in 1998. And Kyle and I met each other through work, actually, and then found out that we both had a mutual love for Magic. And I kind of got him back into it. And here we are talking about Magic about a year and a half later after getting into CEDH, uh, the format that I think he and I both find the most enjoyable in, in terms of Magic and and everything that kind of comes along with it. And so we're, oh, yeah. hopefully, ho- we're hopefully just here to get you all started to think about playing cdh if you've never done it before or to help hopefully kind of help find you a community of people that are also really into uh, this game that is so hard and so difficult but oh so satisfying at the same time couldn't agree more i think you hit the nail on the head here our goal of the podcast is to make this community and build it build it to something that um that we're proud of We've already gone down that path already by building our small pod of CDH players. And we want to share the joy that we've had playing almost every night with our pod uh, to everybody else. This is a really difficult game to play. Magic the Gathering and CDH in general have high barriers to entry for a lot of people. It's difficult to, to get started with, but we want to make sure that that process seems easy for you and make sure that you know that it's attainable. So what sets us apart from other podcasts that you could listen to? Well, what we're going to try to talk about is like a saying that we have a lot in our pod is that's a good card. And Kyle and I started thinking like, what makes a good card and what makes a good card for us? And why do we think that this is a card that belongs in this deck or that deck? And so we're going to try to have episodes that focus on like what what is the kind of the hot card for us of the week or of like in the format right now? Uh, and we'll talk about good commanders, what what makes a good card for your pod, and then what makes maybe makes a good card for playing in a tournament and kind of grinding tournaments. Yep. At the end of yep. the day, cards make up your deck, and your deck is how you play the game, right? So when we focus on cards, we're going to be vying for the card and saying, hey, this is why we like this card. This is why this is a good card. And at the same time, we might be playing devil's advocate and saying, why is this not a good card? So that's something that we'll we'll try to reoccur on, uh, on the podcast as well, is have that that's a good card reoccurring segment. I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier for me, where I mentioned that I got into Magic in 1998, started playing through some friends in elementary school at the time that kind of introduced me to the to the game. And uh, one of the very first cards I really remember enjoying was a card called Royal Assassin. Uh, if you tapped it, you could destroy another tapped creature. Um, it was I Ooh, think, heavy hitter, y'all. A heavy, heavy hitter. It's probably one of my favorite cards from... From the format, I always look to try to slot it in. It's almost one of those pet cards, but it's not that good. So I, I just kind of <laughs> don't do it. How did you get it's into It's not magic? that good. <laughs> it's not, especially for, it's not the best. for CEDH. <laughs> but it's a card I want to try to like have uh, add if I can. Uh, how did you get into Magic? Yeah, so I've been playing since I was 11 years old. I started around the Lorwyn block. I was brought into it by a friend who, at the time, was really competitive in the standard format. Uh, he made YouTube videos, was creating deck lists. Uh, just cool. Just Yeah, exactly. And obviously crushing the local FNMs. So um, I was able to borrow cards from him. He helped me build decks. And eventually, I was crushing at FNMs myself. That lasted until I was a little, probably later into high school. Um, so in my early teens, I really, really, really enjoyed playing Magic. Um, and then once I hit college, I took a break. I didn't play it very much. Uh, once in a while, I would play with friends. And then eventually, later into my college years, I had a friend who um, learned that I played Magic and wanted me to teach him. So, um, and that friend is now in our pod. So, um it, I, that's pretty I, cool. Yeah, that's kind of my journey. And I didn't get into CEDH until about a year ago when I met you at work and we decided to go all in on CEDH. And I think the p- competitive nature of the both of us uh, and our coworkers is what made our pod so successful. And now we're here. Yeah, we're currently grinding with some friends. We probably have 
if it's a really good night we can at least get two pods going if not like two and a half pods uh, so there's at least eight to ten uh people that kind of play pretty frequently it's trying to grow it trying to grow the community trying to grow awareness of like what makes a good magic player right because uh the diversity in our group is pretty wide um i started with mostly friends from work that all played in some capacity and they've all become pretty adept uh, magic players especially cedh players we started off with casual commander but those became like three to four hour slogs where nobody was really doing anything and then the power creep of magic as it happens as you buy more cards and the game gets too expensive we just decided to go fully into cedh with proxies and that has really not only brought the price of the game down for us but also allowed us to play more magic with more interactions and more more complication but like complicated board states that it's just a lot more fun to kind of figure out for those who don't know uh proxies in cedh in the format in general are encouraged uh unlike a lot of other magic formats cedh has very 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 expensive cards we're talking cards that are five to ten thousand dollars and for the most part um in the cedh format uh people allow proxies or you know fake versions of the cards because frankly we want to play the player and not the wallet which is something ya says all the time as much as we love having real cards and building our collections with which both me and y'all have <laughs> large collections <laughs> um yep. and there's certain cards that are simply unobtainable for a lot of people so that's why uh proxies are very greatly encouraged um for this format specifically yeah another thing that you will occasionally hear a proxy called is a play test card um it's actually something that magic kind of does on its own anytime they've in the past reprinted a I think it was like back in the day they would do these like world championship cards with like a gold mm. border and then a yep, different the backing. gold borders uh, yep. the gold border uh, fake those cards are all like fake cards we can consider them play test cards if you will they're not always tournament legal but unfortunately cdh isn't sanctioned by watsi anyways and so so far the community has really um been really accepting of people who just want to get better at the game and maybe not don't have the means or don't want to drop you know what three hundred dollars on a mox like mox diamond for Ooh, you, you know, getting a mox a, diamond a for three hundred dollars i'm in yeah you got one for silver three hundred i think they're going for like six seven eight hundred <laughs> maybe heavily played uh but yeah so that's that's what a proxy or play test card is and again like the format is very um welcoming of of playtests and proxy cards uh, actually even occur encouraged in, in a lot of uh, communities um real fast before we move on what's one of your favorite early cards that you remember Ooh, so when i first started in commander this was back when i was still competing in standard a lot and playing a lot of standard uh, we did have edh decks and my first one was door in the siege tower uh, it was a tree folk tribal deck it was sweet uh, I like playing big cards that hit hard and barely had any interaction. That was me. <laughs> I was ready to go to combat every single turn, which is funny because even in CEDH format, I also kind of play the same way. <laughs> Sweet. My very first deck that I remember resonating with, when you since you mentioned yours, um, must have been Prosper Tomebound. Uh, yeah. That deck just did some really ridiculous things in terms of I just always thought about magic in terms of drawing a card and playing that card. And I, I didn't understand like how exiling a card that I could use later just let me dig deeper into my deck. And uh, once I made that connection, that, 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 that deck, that was the first deck I really splurged on and bought Ooh. like a $10 card, a Whoa. $15 card. Yeah. And buying singles, and going down the dark rabbit hole of buying singles. Uh, buy singles, listen to the professor, uh, different YouTube, uh, look him up. And he, talks, <laughs> he says, buy singles, don't buy, don't gamble on, you know, packs. buying uh, packs. <laughs> or um, boxes. And But yeah, or boxes. <laughs> but that's an entirely different episode. Um, so let's talk about CEDH. Kyle, how do you define CEDH? Yeah, so I think it's important to first 
tell our listeners that CEDH and EDH really have the same rules, right? It's the same format. And for those who don't know EDH, uh, basically it's a you're going to be playing a four-player format, one versus one versus one versus one, where you have uh, your deck is comprised of 100 cards, singleton format, which means that you cannot have the same of one card, besides basic lands, of course. And then you'll have one card be designated as your commander, and your commander lives in the command zone, where you can play it at any time as though it were in your hand. Don't need to get into too much detail on what that means, but basically, um, your commander will designate the color identity of your deck. So if your commander is red-white, then you can only play red-white cards in your deck, nothing more. And that is the gist of the EDH format and how CEDH differs from that. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways that it differs, but for the most part, I would describe it as a mentality of wanting to play the most powerful and the best version of the deck that you can possibly make using the cards that have been printed in magic so it is you know a hundred percent don't hold back i'm trying to play the best deck i can possibly play and win which differs a little bit from what you'll see at maybe a local game store where there's differentiations in how powerful decks are right you can buy uh a, an edh deck out of the box now for what 60 to 100 bucks um and that's called a precon and you can play against precons and if you try to play a cedh deck against a precon um the precon player is going to have a bad time <laughs> generally yeah uh, i think one of the other big things that people will find in casual commander is this idea of the rule zero conversation so a lot of communities will handle it in different ways. They do some some pods will do power levels, right? A one is jank. Uh, most precons, like you mentioned earlier, are going to come out to be anywhere between a five and a six power level, and then you get into high power, and that's like eights and nines, and then tens are really playing playing like really powerful expensive cards if you will like that's it's like kind of the line for a lot of folk but let's talk about power level and power level is where people kind of help to, in casual they they define their power level like i oh it's just a seven but then you start playing with them and it's just too it's like too powerful right um but like i think the big difference is as well they don't have a combo. Like they don't have a quick way to try to end the game. They want to yep. play maybe like this three hour. I'm going to do these big, a million things, but I'm not going to attack you because I want to let you play your thing. Like, no CEDH cuts all of these conversations out. Like um, I, if I can win, win on turn two, I'm going to win on turn two. If I can win on turn five, I'm going to win on turn five. We don't always play a lot of board wipes, although maybe we should in the format, we will combo we will tutor we will hopefully tutor multiple times to yep. try to assemble our win condition and for me the thing i love most is that when it's done right it's just so perfect and it feels just so put together and it's not always the same right i think that's a thing that a lot of casual players will complain that it's every game's gonna feel the same yep you won't have and, that that board stall that you see in in casual. Um, a lot of times the board stall will be, you know, you're playing a, a a dork on turn one, you're playing a dude on turn two, and you're playing a chad on turn three, and then you just keep on building and building and building until you have these massive battleship board states, um, and then you either get board wiped or somebody becomes so powerful that they just swing through everybody else right uh in cdh you don't see that almost every win in cdh is going to be a combo win a lot of times you'll see decks that become prominent um through combat and one of them most notably of recent that's kind of fallen out of flavor was winota winota would win through combat as a boros deck uh, which you didn't see very often but it, it did have success in the cdh format but most of the of time, success. yeah, it, it saw a lot of success. Um, but most of the time in CEDH, you're going to be seeing uh, quick infinite combos, either doing infinite damage or playing cards like Thassa's Oracle that just allow you to win the game uh, using something like Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pact with the Thassa's Oracle. And something that you touched on as well is that these games are going fast, right? So these fast games uh, where you can potentially win on turn one uh, allow for a really nice experience from, as a casual player. Instead of being able to only play maybe one game of, you know, a two, three hour long 
slog fest, as you call them, uh, you're playing three, four games a night with your friends because somebody wins on turn two and you get to shuffle up and try again. And then, hey, next game, you get to win on turn two. Um, and these games go fast and they feel really, really good when you follow your line and you execute. Sometimes they go fast. Sometimes they are also a slog um, and a real... <laughs> yeah. There's a <laughs> few becomes... decks that definitely make them into slogs. <coughs> Stacks. And, you know, it's not a bad thing, right? Like, we can win on turn two, or it can also grind into a long, drawn-out process. But um, when it becomes explosive, it becomes really explosive, right? Like, like playing a card... A, one card can just change the entire game where all of a sudden you can just win the game or yep. it forces out all of this interaction uh, from like two other players. And then all of a sudden uh, somebody else is winning the game on the very next untap. And so uh, yep. it, it makes for very dynamic games. And I think I love that about the format um, specifically. And I also love that the mindset in CDH is already agreed upon right like there is really no mm. hard feelings um you're really trying to make sure that you're playing efficiently you're trying to play uh smart magic and that everybody is trying to do the same thing nobody's out here like I i'm sorry if you don't get to do your game plan but you not doing your game plan allows me the best chance to win right and so and i yeah. understand that if you do the same thing to me if somebody plays stacks that's their uh, their them trying to that's them trying to play, win them trying to win that's and they're trying, them to, trying to win yep me not playing is a great way to make sure they can win yeah that's true exactly and something to, uh, to note as well um that we talk about all the time especially with our newer uh, members of the pod is your ev is 25 percent in this game right you are yeah. expected to win one out of every four games that you're going to play which means that there's a high probability you're going to go on a large losing streak at some point. I'm talking eight, nine games. Hey, yep. <laughs> currently I'm on a nine game losing streak with Talion. I'm not sure you knew that, y'all. Uh, I did I've not know that. that. Yeah, I'm on a nine game losing streak with Talion, which is rough. Um, and, and you know what? It's okay. Because at, at a certain point, I'll be able to do my thing and I'll be able to win and, uh, and then shuffle up and play again, right? So what's the best way for somebody that's new, maybe just to Commander, to try out CEDH? Yeah, I've got some great anecdotal evidence evidence for that. Recently in our pod, we have brought in a few members who have literally never played Magic the Gathering before. And we yeah. have thrown them directly into CEDH, um, which a lot of maybe casual Magic players or standard format, any other format that's not CEDH probably is just scoffing at that. Like, you can't do that. There's no possible way that you can throw somebody into a CEDH format. Well, you're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> we did it. And we did it very <laughs> successfully. It. Within a few months, we have players who absolutely fell in love with CEDH format and fell in love with Magic um, from knowing nothing. And the biggest thing... Uh, for them and how to learn is one playing the game but two watching gameplay right and there are plenty of cedh channels now on youtube uh podcasts about it on where whatever format whatever you're looking at there's just great resources to find cedh gameplay and watching the games will help you learn so 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 fast yeah, I agree. That's how I got into CDH and started learning. Um, honestly, watching CDH uh, videos really taught me more about the games. Uh, I would watch a video and then see something that we literally dealt with. And I, I would come back to my pod and go, hey, guys, we were wrong. Yeah. We, could, we, we handled this interaction in completely wrong. Here's how it's supposed to wa work. Like, watch this video. And so um, that was actually probably one of the other, like, things that kind of caused us to get into CEDH as a whole was that it, it forced us to learn better magic, right? And learn yep. more about how this game is supposed to be played with all of its rules and how how the rules can make for very interesting games, right? I think one of the, my favorite things about magic in particular as a game is the ability to win on somebody else's turn. Like, I just really yep. think that's really cool and oh it's such awesome a fascinating way for a game to be played right it's not just your and, turn my turn yeah it's so turn, rare to see that in any other format right um, yeah. maybe yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. see it with like a burn deck that's instant space but but other than that you're really not seeing um somebody take a turn that's longer than the person's turn that it's on <laughs> in any other yeah. format <laughs> yeah. and you know i think you you 
you're really right. Like watching gameplay will also help you learn all the kind of different uh, decks and commanders that are out there. And like Mag Watsy, Wizards of the Coast is doing us no favors in terms of like printing out more and more legendary creatures at so every many good cards sets. so um, many good I, cards so many good cards so many bad cards but also so <laughs> many cards that are really good and i think at least cedh is a nice spot because i'm not looking at every card right i'm only looking at every card that i think to myself can i play this in a in the format right in CEDH. yeah is there and a lot of times you'll find small niche cards uh for niche decks you'll say okay this card may be a good card but only for this one particular deck in cdh and then i'd say probably about one to two cards per set that they're releasing now um just become a staple just a good card for that color whatever it's being played in or if it's an artifact like the one ring um it goes in every deck <laughs> Uh, the Lord of the Rings set really changed the format. It introduced like two to three car cards that have really kind of warped the format. Um, the One Ring is definitely the, the one of those cards. And then I would also say the Orcish Bowmasters. It's just really yep. warped the entire format. And like when, For sure. we, when we look at... Uh, we look at sets that that's the type of cards we're looking for like cards that cannot help define not only our for format but like every format like i know orcish bowmasters is like really making waves in all the other formats yeah know, like Cross modern yep. all of that yep. yeah so i touched on it a little bit like how did you pick your commander yeah, so uh, I think that was part of the learning process for me. So when I got thrown into EDH, or CEDH rather, I was sat down at a CEDH pond for the first time, and you handed me Yuriko, and you said, good luck, Kyle, play against these three people in a CEDH fashion. <laughs> and I played. So the first time I played, I was playing Yuriko, and uh, I won my first game. You were there. Yeah, kind of back, backseat gaming me, uh, but I won with Athasa's Demonic Consultation combo, and yep. uh, the dopamine flowed through me as I got that win. I read that card text that says, you win the game, and I <laughs> sat there and I went, wow, that was easy. And from then on, <laughs> and from then on, I was hooked on CEDH. <laughs> um, you know, that's that combo just comes kind of comes out of nowhere, and the first time you play it, you're like, oh. That's it? I, I, I just I just win the game, it's and everyone looks at you like, oh, yep, good good game. Let's shuffle yep. up, play again. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I don't think I won with a Thassa's line for quite a number of games. Oh, like uh, I I still I probably still only have like five or six wins across all. Oh of my no games way! Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Thassa's, no way! Thassa's, really? Really? Five yeah, or six I'll games? Uh-huh. I can you must probably... you must have had 40 Yuriko games. No. With Yuriko, I actually very rarely won with Thassa's Oracle. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. For me. Yeah, I this won. This is a huge more tangent. Through... Now I'm just this interested. Is... Yeah. <laughs> I won more games with Yuriko through like weird random like just flips. Uh, just big yeah, flips. Yeah, flips. Yeah. Interesting. I... It like really speaks to the Rakdos player in me <laughs> to just do direct damage <laughs> you're like, to everybody. I, you're like, I have Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation, or I could Demonic Consultation for my 15 cost, put it on the top of my library, and then flip it to do 45 damage. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> um, that's, it's also funny you mentioned Winota. Winota was probably my... So I would say I was playing a casual Yuriko. Like the reason you got, were able to yeah. just grab Yuriko is because I had a casual Yuriko list that... I started off because I wanted to play it in casual. I was like, I wasn't sure if I really liked CDH uh, because we were still playing like casual at the time. And so I was trying to make that Yuriko a little bit more powerful, like playing mm -hmm. high power, if you will. And it probably stayed that way. Um, and I also kind of really personally wanted a deck with real cards. I play. Yeah. I'll play anybody with like any type of card. Like uh, they can be play a playtest proxy. They could write it on a piece of paper and say this is the one <laughs> ring. Like yeah. I don't really care. Um, but for me personally, I like collecting cards. I play. I don't like the sake of collecting for the sake of collecting. I only want cards that I know I can use in the format and will it will find a home in a CEDH deck at some point, right? I, so I like collecting. I hope to own like 
um the moxes someday like yep. uh it's gonna be a while but like i all hope the dual to eventually lands. right win a, all the dual lands like that kind of a thing i the, i'm looking to grind tournaments to do that and so um that means a lot to me and so yuriko i tried to build with as much real cards as was financially made sense right and so yeah i bought like all of the creatures uh because yuriko doesn't really play play great cards like it works in yuriko but they're not common like, ninjas like not great quality cards all yeah. the time yeah um so and then i played winota for a little while mm -hmm. because same thing winota didn't really require some of the most busted cards like um yeah it, none of the power she, nine nothing that was just so incredibly expensive that it, right like yeah it helps but it wasn't necessary um and yep. then we really started doing proxies, which you can find out how to do online through Google, and we kind of went nuts. And so now I probably have eight commander decks, all CEDH decks that yep. I, I I rotate through and play. The ones I play the most nowadays are Kinnan, Najila, and then my Mardu queens, uh, Timna and Jessica. Wonderful, yeah. And right now, you know, you're crushing it with the Kinnan deck. I think every time that we've been playing, you've been absolutely dominating with Kinnan. Um, and right now, the meta is dominated by Kinnan. So I look to you, I look to you, and I look to the other people in our pod who play Kinnan, and I say, okay, that's the that's the bar. That's the standard right now. Kinnan is definitely the best two-colored uh, commander, I think, I think, personally. Right now, um, yeah. In the format. I think so. Um, uh, I think that it is not even really close. I think that Omnix and Talion are making some like waves, but they're like, making some. Li they're, they're little waves. They're little, little waves, waves, but like, but like as far yeah. as dominating the format, like that, that that Kinnan is. is it's really, just consistent. Really good. It's the king he, of consistency. So is, consistent. Being able to tap for double, no, for one extra mana uh, from any non-land permanent is just so good. That produces mana, like, that's just so good. Yep. Um, what do you play right now? So right now, um, I would say that my bread and butter most played CEDH deck. It was actually the first CEDH deck I proxied, which was Corvold, Fakerous King. It's an awesome Jund card. It costs two colorless plus Jund, um, and... It is a fairy dragon that when it ETBs, it sacrifices, or you have to sacrifice a permanent. And any time that you sacrifice a permanent, you get to draw a card and put a 1-1 one, one counter onto Corvold. So uh, I was drawn to the deck because I like uh, the idea of commanders that are big and menacing. Um, as you can tell, my first commander, like I said before, was Doran Siege Tower, and he got big and menacing. I want to yep. be able to have in my command zone something that is a bomb, something that I throw down and the table goes, uh-oh, that's a problem, right? <laughs> um, so Corvold is uh, my bread and butter. Love that deck. Second most played at this point... It's hard to say. Um, I've been playing a lot of Gandalf the White, which a lot of people in the CAH community are probably quite throwing a question mark up in their head. Like, Gandalf the White, that's not really a deck. It's extremely fringe. I think it's... Um, I honestly think it's better than Heliod, which is a hot take. Uh, and Heliod is maybe d tier right now um so it's still definitely a cedh deck i can combo and win the game very fast um if i want to but it's more stacks uh focused and i think it plays really well into certain uh pods other than that i also play niv mizzet who is very similar to corvold in a sense where once i cast niv mizzet perun i'm in a really dominant position and it feels really good i also have another, a couple other decks like i said i was talking about my nine game losing streak on Talion, uh, which I don't really <laughs> want to talk about more about, but uh, I'll eventually learn how to play that deck. It's more of a control based uh, mid range deck. And I think I've been playing it a little too fast. I'm so used to Corvold, which is a very fast turbo deck. Like I'm trying yeah. to win on turn two, trying to win on turn three. And Talion is not like that. So I think I need to, to, to reel it back a little bit with Talion and my mindset um, and kind of learn to play a more control based game, uh, similar to how I play Niv, I think. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I, I really believe in playing decks that stretch you as a player, right? That kind of really um, force you to learn more, honestly, more rules about the game, right? Yeah. I think that a deck that forced me to kind of take a look at it was a deck that I know a lot of people don't like in Tyam, uh, Luminous mm. Enigma. Um, 
Kayam's community really understands rules quite well. And like, cause this is a deck that the only deck I've seen where it's not your turn, you're being attacked for lethal damage and out of nowhere, you can activate Tyam and then all of a sudden you're winning the game during somebody else's combat step uh, right before damage is being dealt to you that would kill you. Like, yeah. that's yeah. pretty nuts. And like, It knowing, is weird. It is a weird deck. It's a weird deck and you have to really understand not only your deck, but the way the game is structured right in terms of how to to kind of like where people can interact with you and yeah. like where you you can go wrong like i think that's what i liked about yuriko mm -hmm. yuriko taught me more about the combat step than almost any other deck right like mm -hmm. i understood like ninjutsu says that it's all it cares about is an unblocked attacker can be ninjutsu out and then you can ninjutsu at any point during the combat step right so yeah. as, after a blocker is declared and having decks like that that really force you to kind of learn um, more about the game i think it's just so cool um and, and so important yeah and i got a question for you y'all yeah someone comes to you says it's, it's my first time playing cdh what commander do you recommend for me Nowadays, I would probably say, well, are they looking to, are we, are we hypothesizing that they are going to go buy it or like just something to, like, to play right now? Nope. Someone comes up to you and says, hey, I want to learn CDH. I'm going to proxy this deck. Doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, cost doesn't matter. I would say probably, uh, to be quite honest with you, um, one of the easiest decks to learn that is very CDH, Goto. Bandit, Ooh, Wardlord. Great. Wardlord. And, yep. Go to. Because essentially the primer is if you can create 11 mana, you can win the game. Yep. Yeah. And we'll throw Godo cool. on the screen here um, so yep. people can see. And so basically what you do is when you play Godo, you can fetch for an artifact called Hemel the Host. And it yep. gives you um, basically an infinite combo effect where you can just take the whole board, take the whole table down. Um, so yeah. in our pod, we have a Goto player, um, and he has coined the term, give Goto his hat. So when Goto gets his hat, he's happy and he wins the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, that's, that's my take for probably the easiest to understand and like go like from a casual standpoint, you're going to combat and that's how you win the game. Because when you go to combat, Helm of the Host says, make a copy and you can swing with it. And then Godo's saying, like, if it, this is the first time he's attacking, you can untap him and you can go again, have another combat step. And yep. you can basically infinitely go to combat. Uh, I think the fastest yep. I've heard is a turn one Godo win. Like, it is possible. It is not common, but it is very possible. I've definitely lost to you. Turn two Godo wins at many least times. four or five times. Yeah, many times. Yep. Many times. That's an excellent how about, answer. How about you? I would. Um, I think Yuriko is actually a really, really fun way to learn CDH. I think um, so too. I I think I'm. I was blessed to uh, play Yuriko my very first time playing CDH. Uh, it's fun because you get to interact. Uh, you're playing blue black, so you can interact on other people's turns and stop people from winning. Uh, I think I would recommend this deck more towards someone who has played Magic before, because you kind of have to understand the timings of, okay, when is there going to be this threat being presented to me that I can counter, right? Inherently, when you're playing blue, you're going to have to counter really important spells that your opponents are playing. So I think if you have already played Magic before and you have a general understanding of how counter spells work, Yuriko is a great starter deck. And it also includes probably the most prominent and easy in quotes, way to win a CDH game, which is that Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation uh, yeah. combo that we've talked yep. about. Uh, once yep. you understand how to play the combo properly, um, it becomes very easy to win with, and you can see consistent wins regardless, really, of skill once you kind of get that line. Yeah, I think those are the two decks that I would also probably recommend. Um, Yuriko is fun. Uh, people coming from casual will love the ninja theme. Like that's very well liked, right? I think she's yeah. still in the top top twenty most played commanders on EDH Rec. 
um, which is a site I used to use all of the time when I first started Magic, and I almost never go there now. Like I, I yeah. use, de- I, I definitely don't check out EDH Rec as often as I used to, but um, I, I think it's still a pretty cool resource as far as different commanders that are played. But you know, CDH yeah. is just so different. Let's talk about how do you find a community or a pod of people to play CEDH with? What do you recommend? Uh, my recommendation uh, is definitely to find a Discord server um, from one of the CEDH-based communities. I think that there are, like I said before, a ton of YouTube channels where you can find CEDH gameplay. And once you find the CEDH gameplay channel that you really like, most of them have pretty big Discord servers uh, where you can find people that are CEDH players and play online via Spelltable, which is an app that a lot of people use, or a web- web-based app that a lot of people use to play CEDH. Um, it's pretty difficult, I would say, to find CEDH pods at local game stores. Uh, I'm based in the Seattle area, and there's not a lot of CEDH pods that I could find, um, but for the most part, online you can find a very large number of cdh games running any night of the week yeah uh i agree with you um like i will be quite honest um i will shout out play to win uh i'm actually a patron for their for for them because i just i've gotten so much value and entertainment from their videos and you know honestly i would be lying if i said that we weren't really inspired by the by oh yeah of course uh, for this podcast like really inspired by what they do and like uh, really look to them in terms of being great leaders in terms of creating community and making sure that this 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 complicated game is fun right like that's yep what i hope that people get from this podcast is that the same joy right like and that they catch our joy and that our love for for this format and for for the people who play this game right um and so uh, another place i i think we would be remiss to, to me- not mention that you know uh they can join our discord and uh, yep try to find games through through the community here that we're trying to build because like uh kyle and i both have experience in building real life communities uh, of people and getting them together and getting them to you know like play or try different things and so like we have a lot of experience doing that and so we're hoping to do that same thing here uh through this podcast through gameplay video and then also through the discord uh that's a good card which you can find below in the description of this podcast so once again, let's. We just want to wrap up uh, this podcast, the first podcast, by saying that, like, at the end of the day, we're looking to build community and give you all a safe space that you can kind of come and and learn more about this game, um, and specifically this format, and and find other people, other nerds, if you will, that just love this game. Yeah, and I I think this is when we put on our PSA as well of uh, this community is for anyone. It yep. uh, doesn't matter if you've never played Magic the Gathering before. If you have an interest in learning Magic the Gathering, learning CEDH, this is the space for you. We have taught many people, like we were saying before, how to play this game, how to play this format. Um, so even if you don't have any CEDH experience, or even if you're a tournament player where you just want more minds, you know, maybe you want someone to talk to and bounce your ideas off of uh, for your upcoming tournament. Many of us in our in our uh, Discord or in our community would love to help you deck tech, go over your deck list and, and assist. Yeah, and if you enjoyed anything from this podcast, please, even if you didn't, please <laughs> jump on the Discord. <laughs> if you didn't, give us a pity us, like. No. <laughs> right, let us know and, and come discuss it with us. Like we are, if I, we are anything, I can definitely say this about Kyle as well. We are very open to feedback and we want to hear what you have to say. So please yep, come join us. The good, us. the bad, and the ugly. And the ugly. And so please come chat with us. Come let us know. Uh, talk to friends about it share this like that'll help us out a lot especially if this is something you enjoyed and uh we hope to see you on the next one yep thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode